Okay, today we are going to be learning about the history of the atomic structure. It is going to be super exciting. Um, you should be following along with the two pages of guided notes. So there are some fill in the blanks. Um, you're gonna be drawing some pictures of atomic models and you will be pausing the video occasionally to watch a supplemental video to help explain some of the concepts. So get ready ladies and gentlemen, cause here we go. First up on our journey through the atomic structure is an ancient Greek philosopher named Democrates. He was around somewhere between 450 to 600 BC, and he believed that all matter was made up of these small particles that he called atoms, and we've been calling them atoms ever since. So, he had an idea about what these atoms were. He thought that these atoms varied in size, shape, mass, position, and arrangement. He also thought that solids were small pointy atoms and liquids were large round atoms. And he thought that oils were small round atoms that could easily slip past one another. Um, so take a moment now and draw in your box in your guided notes what Democrates thought the atom looked like. And you can use the model that I have presented for you on the screen to help you do that. So take a few minutes and um, draw that in. Okay, so now we're gonna fast forward about 2000 years to 1808 in England. Um, a lot happened in the middle there. We almost took a step back with alchemy. Although it did provide a lot of the science that we use now, it was almost like the science of magic. Um, and there was a lot of other things going on. So like the building of America, the Black Plague, you know, exploring the world, history, history, history. And then we get here. So we get to John Dalton and he thought that atoms cannot be divided, that they were these tiny particles, almost like marbles. And he thought that each element was made of its own kind of atom and that they could combine to make compounds. So this is an example of what John Dalton thought the atom now looks like. That they were these spherical marbles that could combine with other atoms and create compounds. So take a minute and draw this atomic model into your timeline for John Dalton. So next up we have J.J. Thompson and he was also in England in 1897 and this guy discovered the electron and the electron charge and he did this with a cathode ray tube. But there was a problem because Thompson knew that atoms were neutrally charged so he found the negative but he couldn't find the positive particle. So I really want you to watch the cathode ray tube experiment. So what you're gonna do is pause this video and underneath there is a series of links. So you're gonna click the first one that's called the cathode ray tube video and you're going to watch the experiment happen. It's actually another teacher demonstrating for his class what the cathode ray tube is. So uh, this is how Thompson discovered the electron. Um, in your timeline, there is a box labeled cathode ray tube. And in that box, you will be drawing how Thompson used the experiment to discover the electron. When you're finished watching the video and drawing in the box, then re return to this video and let's continue our timeline. So now that you've seen the video about how um, J.J. Thompson used the cathode ray tube to discover the electron. Um, he came up with this cookie model. It's also called, called the plum pudding model, but we don't know what that is. So we're going to call it the chocolate chip cookie model, um, where the chocolate chips are the negative electron and the rest of the cookie is the positive. Because if you remember, the problem was that he couldn't figure out what the positive part was. He only found the negative. So he just decided that the rest of the cookie was the positive part. So in your timeline where it says atomic model, 
take a minute and draw the cookie model where the chocolate chips are the negative electron and the rest of the cookie is the positive part and also label your picture. The next person that really contributed to the atomic model is Ernest Rutherford and he was around in 1911 in England. Now if you remember, J.J. Thompson discovered the negative electron but he couldn't figure out what the positive part was. Well, that's what Ernest Rutherford did. He discovered the proton, which is positive, and the nucleus. And he also decided that the atoms were mostly empty space but had a dense central core. The way that Rutherford discovered the protons and the nucleus was by conducting the gold foil experiment. What I want you to do now is pause this video and click on the second link titled gold foil experiment and watch how he did this. Here is another picture of the gold foil experiment. So Ernest Rutherford fired alpha particles at a very thin sheet of gold foil and what he discovered was the majority of the particles went right through. But he did notice that some particles were deflected at odd angles and this did not make sense according to J.J. Thompson's cookie model. So what I want you to do right now is in your timeline in the box labeled gold foil experiment is to draw and label this picture. So take a few minutes and do that now. This is what Ernest Rutherford really thought would happen based on J.J. Thompson's plum pudding or what we call the chocolate chip cookie model where all of the alpha particles would just fire right through with virtually no deflection. However, this is what actually happened. The majority of the alpha particles did fire straight through. However, some were deflected and the only way that they were deflected was because they hit something massive in the gold foil. Now, this resulted in Ernest Rutherford discovering that this tiny massive thing in the middle of the atom was a positive nucleus. So the electrons are still there, but now we have this positive nucleus in the center of the atom causing this major deflection of alpha particles. In your timeline, next to your gold foil experiment drawing, I want you to draw this model of the atom. So Ernest Rutherford found that the nucleus is dense and positive and it is surrounded by your negative electrons. So take a minute and draw this now. Next up is this guy, Niels Bohr, in 1913 in England. And he thought that electrons orbit the nucleus in rings almost like the way planets orbit the sun. And Bohr was trying to show why the negative electrons were not sucked into the nucleus of the atom, considering that electrons are negative and the nucleus was positive. Uh, Bohr used the spectral lines of hydrogen to figure this out. Here are three examples, hydrogen, oxygen, and sodium that model what Niels Bohr was thinking. So as you can tell, we have our positive nucleus in the center surrounded by rings. And on these rings, we have a lot of electrons. So what I want you to do is draw oxygen, which is the red one in the upper right hand corner, into your atomic timeline guided notes. Also, you need to label your picture. So take a few minutes and do that now. There are still being discoveries made about atomic structure, but this is the model that we currently use. It's called the electron cloud model. So in this model, electrons travel around the nucleus in random orbits, and we cannot predict exactly where they will be at any given moment, but you can predict the most likely place they will be. We call these orbitals or probability clouds. So we have the dense positive nucleus in the center surrounded by orbitals where the electrons live. So take a minute and in your timeline in the atomic model box, I want you to draw this picture and label. 
All right, we made it. Let's summarize our ideas of the atom. So there are three subatomic particles, and subatomic means within the atom. First, we have electrons. So the symbol of an electron is E negative, and its charge is negative one. It has a relative mass of zero. Even though it does have a mass, it's so small in comparison to the atom that it's considered negligible, meaning that we don't take it into account. Next, we have protons, and its symbol is P, and it has a charge of plus one, and it has a relative mass of one. And even though its actual mass is still very small, it's much larger than that of an electron. Next, we have neutrons, which symbol is N, and it has a charge of zero because it is neutral, and it also has a relative mass of one. The mass of a proton and a neutron are the same. Whew, we made it. You wanna hear a joke? So, the neutron turns to the electron and says, hey, electron, think like a proton and stay positive. And on that note, guys, have a great day.